Hello and welcome back to the Wide World of Physics where today we are looking at part two in our series on the properties of waves where we are discussing the uh, property of refraction of waves. Your official definition of refraction. Refraction is the change in angle, the bending of the path of a light wave as it passes across the boundary separating two media. Refraction is caused by the change in speed experienced by a wave when it changes medium. Again, nice official definition. What does it actually mean in English? So our definition says that light will bend when it encounters a different medium. A medium is just a substance. It's a fancy science word for a substance. We're talking glass, plastic, anything transparent. It has to be transparent because if it's not transparent, light doesn't go through it. You can't see through your table, for example, or your desk, unless it's a glass top table or a glass top desk. If it is, then that will show reflection, and refraction for that matter, uh, as will windows. But something like a wooden table will not. So as it comes through, the light comes in, it will bend when it goes through the next piece of medium, it will change its angle, and when it goes back out to its original medium, so if this is air and glass and air, it will go back to the same angle that it came in. So this angle here and this angle here are the same. Okay. Again, these are measured from the normal, so remember we're measuring it from here. So from here and here, that angle there and that angle there are going to be identical. This one is obviously different, and we will prove that using the same techniques we used in reflection. You can use your flashlight with a tape over to make a single slit. I'm going to use the light box and we will see exactly how this works. So as you can see, we have a beam of light coming just like before, and we have it going straight through the block. Now this is why, by the way, before anybody asks me why I'm showing it like this, this is exactly why you can look straight out a window and everything looks perfectly normal. Okay? Windows are also very thin, so they don't have much of a refract... well, they have a refractive index, but what they don't have is a lot of time for that light to refract. So there's not a lot of refraction going on in a window. This block, however, we're looking at it the long way, as far as the light going through it, so if I start changing the angle at which the block is at encountering the light, you'll see that there's a the line where it should be going through, which is the straight line through it, which is actually reflecting off the paper more than anything else. But you can see that this light bends. It's not at the same angle. It's coming in at this angle, and it bends slope to move down here, and then it comes back out through this line right here. You can barely see it because the block is covering up a lot of it. But that line right there is the line it comes out at. Now, if it comes out that line, it should be coming out over here, but it doesn't. It's moving out to over there. It has bent. It has slowed. It has bent. It has changed its speed. Therefore, it has changed the angle at which it moves and then comes back out and it goes back up to its normal speed, which is what light would do in, in air. And you can see that in glass, in plastic in this case, it moves slower than it does in air, so therefore it bends down. So this time I've swapped out the plastic block that I was using before with a rather thick glass block. This is a slightly larger block, it's a bit thicker, but it will show my point quite easily. So as you can see now, the beam is going straight through it. If I change the angle, you can see very much that the light should be coming out here. If I put that bit right there to, so you can line it up. It should be coming out there. That's where that line should be coming through, but it obviously isn't. It's coming out way up here. Now, if it's coming out up there, it has to have changed its angle. And it changed its angle based on the fact that this block is made of a different material than the uh, air, for obvious reasons. And in doing so, 
that block is slowing down the light so that it's moving at a different angle. It is refracting. It is bending. Now where this really comes into play is the full Pink Floyd experience, if you'll pardon the pun. For those of you who are too young to understand that, uh, just Google Dark Side of the Moon and you will understand after this. So if I take a prism, put the prism in, get the prism at the right angle, you can see that the light comes in, comes through the prism. It slows down, but it slows down so much in this case that you can see, just on the other side, you get a rainbow. This was work that was done by Isaac Newton back uh, before he was sent home for plague. And this was published in his book called Optics, which he wrote during um, his time during a lockdown. And this shows how light can be broken down into its constituent colors. White light, as you're seeing come out of here, is made up of all the colors at one go. As you slow them, as you break them down, you get the different colors. You can just barely see that there's rainbow colors coming out of that side. If you have a triangular prism, I highly recommend attempting this at home because this is very neat. And it shows you that these colors become, are the constituent colors all in, all made up. The white light is made up of all the different wavelengths of those different colors. So another trick you can actually do at home, it requires just a bottle of water, I've got a rather large one here, and a bit of paper with an arrow drawn on it. Now if you look, that arrow is pointing to the left as we go through, but it will slow down so much as I put it through this jug of water. As you can now see, the arrow is pointing to the left. As I move it behind the bottle, it's now pointing to the right. This is a trick on two levels, really, but you can do this at home very easily. You can start with the arrow, doesn't matter which way you point it, but there's a trick on two levels, one of which involves the water, and the reason it will distort here, just like that, is because the bottle is curved. It's not a perfect cylinder, and if you had a square um, container like a fish tank or something like that, you could do this uh, much easier. So what's happening is, is that the light is changing its direction, literally in this case, because you can see how it is working with the arrow, and you can see that the light is bending and moving. Thank you for watching part two in our series on the properties of waves, where we're discussing refraction. Please remember to like and subscribe to this video and this channel, and by all means, please stay tuned for part three of our series where we start talking about total internal reflection.